This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Landmark College, offering comprehensive support for students with learning disabilities, ADHD, and ASD. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Landmark College. We teach differently. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell, your host of Distraction. Today we're going to be talking about the treatment of ADHD in kids, uh, more specifically when parents disagree about what is the right course of treatment for their child. My guest today knows all about this subject. Heather Bragg is a former classroom teacher and learning specialist with a bachelor's degree in elementary education and a master's in communication sciences and disorders from Northwestern University. She is the author of the book Learning Decoded, Understanding and Using Your Child's Unique Learning Style to Improve Academic Performance. She also attended my summer camp up in uh, Glen Arbor, Michigan last year with her child. And uh, so I know her personally as well as uh, professionally. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to have you join me today, Heather, and, and thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. The, the camp was fun, wasn't it? The camp was fantastic. Um, it's funny because my oldest, uh, who was 17 last summer, um, honestly was a little... Uh, honestly pissy with me as we were driving up and he was like why do we have to go I'm doing really well I kind of want to leave this whole ADHD thing in my past and by the end of the first day he said we're coming back here next year right <laughs> so, for people are. for people who don't know it it's a it's a week-long camp for kids with ADHD and their parents and uh I work with the parents each morning, and a master teacher works with the kids doing experiential learning. So it's a, it's a chance for parents to meet with other parents, you know, whose kids have ADHD as well as me, and then for kids to be with other kids and do some fun activities together. People tend to really enjoy it, and wouldn't you say that's true, Heather? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We had a blast, and I think it was, um, you know, the content that you – have and then just, you know just the organic discussions that come up with other parents and then the way that kids bond with each other um, it's just so many great things about the camp it's a uh, hallowellsummercamp.com hallowellsummercamp.com um, so so lead us into this discussion when parents disagree specifically around medication how 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 can you guide us on that you know i think um, when i was a learning disability specialist a lot of my students were on medication, and parents were um, pretty open with us teachers, specifically when I was uh, teaching at a, a specialized school, uh, the Hyde Park Day School at the University of Chicago. Parents were pretty open with us when their child would start medication or when they would change medication or adjust dosage. But then when I went back to teaching in public schools, I feel like parents weren't nearly as open, and I think a lot of that is this underlying distrust between parents oftentimes at schools, you know, teachers, administrators. And I think so often there's a, a lot of misunderstanding around medication. I don't think the media does it justice. Um, I think children on ADHD medication are often um, that concept of being on medication is lumped into a lot of other complex issues in our culture of you know prescription medication abuse and and I think it's just something that parents often don't speak openly about in general um, and it was definitely something that's been on my mind with both of my kids over the past couple of years and um, you know big decisions involving quite a few people agreeing and a lot of hesitancy and I have to say that uh, the experiences we've had with both boys being on medication uh, it's been really positive, and I don't think parents speak to that enough. And I'm, I'm hoping that as more of us have positive experiences and share those, that maybe some of the stigma will be chipped away. Um, mm. You know, it, it's a big it's a big topic, and it's a big decision to make as a parent. But I don't think it's necessarily as scary as it has to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, say more. I mean, how did you how did you come to it yourself, and and how did you deal with learning about it? Yeah, so I actually have, um, you know, two stories with both my boys. So I'll go in uh, chronological order of oldest to youngest. So my oldest, Alec, is 17. 
Um, I've been in his life for four years. So he, uh, so my husband, John, is my second husband, and Alec is his son from his first marriage. Um, Alec was diagnosed with ADHD fairly young. I want to say, you know, probably around kindergarten. Um, Alec lost his mom to cancer in seventh grade. Uh, so he had been through quite a bit. Um, they relocated from Washington, D.C. here to Chicago in eighth grade, at which point he went off of, I believe he was last on Stratera. And he had, before I knew him, um, had tried a couple medications to varying degrees of success. Um, I know when he was in seventh grade, he was on a stimulant and it, it wasn't, you know, an appetite suppressant and he was, you know, getting pretty thin. Um, so they moved here. He started eighth grade, made it through eighth grade okay, um, and made it through freshman and sophomore year of high school okay. Grades were all right. Um, social interactions were all right. Um, and going into junior year, the academic work we knew was going to um, ratchet up, and he was going to be taking the SAT and the ACT. And so um, in conjunction with uh, the family therapist that worked with him, you know, around grief and, and loss and uh, of his mom. Between uh, the therapist and John and myself as parents, we decided to give this another try. And, and Alec was totally on board. He was a big part of the decision-making process. And he does best on a non-stimulant. So um, I believe he's on Concerta. That is, that's a non-stimulant. Is that correct? No, Concerta is a stimulant. Concerta is, oh, okay. is a methylphenidate. I might have my wires crossed on that one. But regardless, he's doing well on Concerta. So we, um, we gave that a try. And um, He's doing really well. I mean, he's very aware of, um, you know, it's not all roses. He said that uh, when he's around his friends and everyone's joking around, he feels like he's kind of the, the wet blanket. That he's a little bit more serious and less tolerant of, of silliness. But overall, he feels like the, um, the benefits outweigh the, the negative mm-hmm. side. And, you know, as, as people that live with him, we've noticed that his grades have improved his social life has really improved. Um, it wasn't bad before, but it's even better. So, you know, when he heads off to college, a big piece of this will be his decision. Um, but uh, again, it's not a super clean, easy, you know, 45 degree improvement trajectory. But overall, I think it's been, you know, I think we would all say it's been a positive um, piece of his life and of his treatment. Mm-hmm. Now, the youngest, Aaron, who's my biological child, um, is in second grade. He's seven. Mm-hmm. He was diagnosed in kindergarten, and none of us were surprised. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know, even as a baby, I can look back and see that he was insatiable, um, always had to be on the move, always had to be on the go. Um, the more stimulation around him, the better. Um, you know, he was just a, a busy, busy, busy guy. Uh-huh. And so, um, you know, we. We started hearing some red flags from preschool teachers uh, in kindergarten. His kindergarten teacher said, let's look into this. And um, so we had an outside evaluation done and uh, not surprised at all. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the statue task. I hadn't heard of that one before. The kids are asked to basically hold still for as long as possible. Uh-huh. And granted, he was freshly six, and we certainly don't expect him to be, you know, to be able to hold still for very long. Yeah. Um, but he was, like, below the first percentile. Like, I think he <laughs> made it, like, three seconds. <laughs> so, you know, he was uh, the psychologist that did the evaluation uh, was just really funny. She, you know, showed us how he would – he stood there, and then he started twisting and making faces, <laughs> and, you know. Um, and we're like, yep, that sounds like Aaron. Um, so – when he had the diagnosis, I thought, okay, it's, it's probably going to be third grade that we're going to, you know, have to cross that medication bridge. Um, his kindergarten teacher had really was a very accommodating. His first grade teacher was very accommodating. Um, and his current teacher, his second grade teacher as well, very flexible. Um, but, you know, at one point he got like a 50-something percent on a math test, and he's fantastic at math. He's very good. He just couldn't focus long enough to even finish reading a question. Mm-hmm. Um and so I was pretty open to it, having been in the field and I think just a little bit more experience through other people's children. Uh, but my ex-husband, we co-parent, uh, was not open to it. And it really, um, my, my ex is remarried and they have uh, twin baby girls. And the pediatrician um, for the babies happened to be talking to my ex-husband about her, her own daughter having ADHD and starting medication Mm -hmm. and um, my you know my ex really likes this pediatrician trusts her 
so she was really the catalyst. He called me and said, look, I just spoke to our pediatrician. We really like her. She's really very holistic, and she advocates medication. So would you be open to it? And I said, yes. Uh-huh. And so we saw a great doc. Um, he started on Focalin. Uh, we've seen a lot of improvement. He's, he's still him. Yeah. <laughs> he's still a live wire. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't have to nag at him to finish his homework. I don't have to tell him a dozen times to go put his shoes on, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, just uh, his interactions with his friends are better because he's less impulsive. You know, sometimes he'd be at recess and he would get a little too rough or, you know, do something kind of knuckleheaded because he's just, that impulsivity is so present. Um, and, you know, we've really seen some some improvement there. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's wonderful. You know, with your, the other son, with the uh, somewhat dampening of his personality, I would talk to the doctor uh, and modify whatever he's taking. My standard is, I want no side effects, zero side effects, other than appetite suppression without unwanted weight loss. You almost always do get some appetite suppression is the only side effect I'll accept. So I don't want to see any personality change. I don't want loss of spontaneity, loss of humor. Uh, No side effects is my standard. And you, you can achieve that simply by modifying the dose, changing the medication, the timing of the medication. Uh, you, you, it can get pretty subtle, and you, you, you want to work with a doctor who really has a lot of experience with this. It's, it's not simple. It's not just take this pill. and. But when it works, as you've discovered, it's, it's really quite beautiful. And uh, it, it is quite analogous to eyeglasses and you want to get the exact right prescription and when you get it um, it's transformative everything gets better it's not just homework everything you do improves with focus yeah the home life you know with both the boys we just have more enjoyable dinner conversations Um, everything functions easier getting out the door Uh, and then like you mentioned their social interactions with their friends Um, they're both pretty gregarious happy kids, but, you know, that impulsivity can really get in the way, um, and we've seen huge improvements there, so um, everything <laughs> everything functions better, and I think when I'm in kind of that world, um, or like at camp, and I think so many of us parents speak so openly about these things, um, it's easy to be like, yeah, you know, I'm, we're forging the right path, but I think when we're out there in a typical public school, and uh, our kids aren't necessarily the norm. Um, I think it's uh, it's much harder to speak openly about medication. Um, and I've been a little guarded as to what other parents, you know, who I, I share what with. Um, I've braced myself for, you know, judgmental comments. I really haven't gotten those yet, so I don't know if I'm picking my people wisely or maybe if I was just a little paranoid to begin with. Um, you know, but I think, uh, I don't know, we'll see as time goes on and I and I you know, continue to tell people. Well, there's the, there's widespread ignorance, and um, uh, it's it's too bad because the the medical community is is uniformly uh, in favor of trying medication. I mean, all you're doing is trying it, and if it, it you know if it causes any problem, you stop it. I mean, it, it couldn't be simpler. If if it if you try it and it helps, you continue it. So it. It's it's very simple, and a trial of medication is just that. It's a trial. It's not surgery. It's immediately reversible. These meds are in and out of your system the same day. And it's a shame that the, the general public has such a negative uh, perception of it. it you know, the, the press only writes about the downside. They never write about the upside. You never read an article about... You know, you know these med the good these meds do. They 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 just never write about that. They they only write about the side effects and the damage they can do and the uh, the over prescribing and the selling of them and you know all of which does happen. There, there's a black market for them and they can be misused, which is true enough. But they they never write about like what you're telling people, you know, that these meds can be tremendously helpful as well. You'll, you'll never see a story like that. And it's very rare that you get uniform uh, agreement about in, the, in, the, in the medical community. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, it's interesting that um, a pediatrician was the catalyst because I think you had touched on this at, at camp that on the whole, pediatricians aren't always 
um, a go-to for this type of medication. You know, they're great in so many facets, but um, when you get into ADHD and stimulant medication, really your best bet is a, a child psychiatrist, a specialist. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, I don't just with my family situation and, and co-parenting with my ex, and I don't think we would have even gotten that far. Um, I think this pediatrician was the key and was the catalyst. And, and I know they have so much, you know, how can you possibly be an expert on all things related to, um, you know, childhood uh, wellness. Right. Um, and I think she was really informed because it was her personal experience with her own daughter that she really was uh, the change agent in our situation. I don't even think we would have crossed the threshold um, to the psychiatrist's office without her. Um, so I really commend her for being, um, you know, speaking positively to this. But it's too bad you had to get lucky. You know, you. you, you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is too bad. Yeah. You know, I think we would have eventually gotten there. Um, I think. Uh, in the back of my mind, I thought we'd hit third grade and, you know, the curriculum changes and it's, uh, what do they say? They're no longer learning to read, they're reading to learn. Right. And, you know, a lot of the um, independence and, you know, there's a big shift onto the kids. And I thought, okay, that's the point at which, um, you know, my guy might start to fall apart <laughs> and that just his, uh, his brain power alone won't, won't save him. I figure we'd get more feedback from teachers in third grade and we kind of be pushed to that direction Mm -hmm. um but yeah it turns out we we didn't need to wait for that we didn't need to wait for aaron to struggle which Mm -hmm. is great yeah Um, yeah because he he probably would have yeah so what advice would you have for parents out there who are considering medication for their child with add you know i think exactly what you said give it a try there's no downside if if you're entertaining starting medication it's probably because your child's struggling so you know there's really nowhere to go but up not you know for the most part there's nowhere to go but up and um i you know when i was in the field i hear so many parents really regret not taking action whether it's medication or other interventions they regretted not taking action sooner um i never heard any parents say you know what we intervened too early it was right. unnecessary. I never right. heard anyone say that. No, you I never. Think exactly what you said. Give it a try. Mm-hmm. You know, if it doesn't work well, stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then exactly. I think, you know, that co-parenting, when, when parents don't see eye to eye, whether they're still married or they're not together, um, I think that adds this kind of additional layer of complexity. And so I think, um, you know, deep down when two people are, are parenting a child, it can be, you know, in a divorced family situation or a co-parenting situation, so often there are power struggles. And um, it's understandable, and everyone can say, you know, oh, my child's needs come first, and they mean it. But there's still this um, very shaky sense of control that each parent, you know, each parent, I think, gets worried about losing ground to the other one or being steamrolled over or things like that. And I think... Um, if they can speak maybe openly to each other, if there's that kind of rapport to say, look, I'm afraid of losing ground, but I do want the best for my child. Um, if that can kind of be part of the conversation, that can be more productive. Right, right. And then you can decide based on what, what happens, you know, how do we how do we want to go on from here? It's not, you just need to remember, it's not surgery. It's it's completely reversible. And it uh, the trial only needs to last one day, so... Well, Heather, thank you so much for coming on. It's uh, it's really generous of you to share your experience and uh, your personal experience as well as professional experience. And uh, uh, you're a great mom, and uh, you you have great kids. Well, thank you. I, I certainly try. <laughs> yeah, you 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 succeed. You succeed. I know that from having seen you. Um, so let me thank you for joining me. And and you can find Heather Bragg's book. Uh, her the name of the book again is Learning Decoded, understanding and using your child's unique learning style to improve academic performance. Uh, on her website, which is learningdecoded.com, or of course on Amazon. So go to learningdecoded.com, where you'll find a lot more, or go to Amazon and. Uh, I love this conversation because we took a very complicated issue and and really put it in the simple, uh, understandable terms without oversimplifying. We we really made it uh, accessible. I think that uh, in a way that parents, uh, listeners can 
can appreciate and, and use, which is what we try to do on this podcast. So thank you so much, Heather, and um, I look forward to seeing you next summer. Thank you. Yeah, see you in the summer of uh, 2019. Very good. Thanks a lot. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, we have a favor to ask. We're trying to learn more about you, our listeners. So we just released a brief survey on our website at distractionpodcast.com. There are only nine questions, so it should only take a couple of minutes to fill out, if that. We're going to take your answers and incorporate your feedback into the podcast. We really appreciate our distraction community, and we want to continue to give you the kinds of episodes you want to hear. So this survey will help us do that. Again, just head over to distractionpodcast.com, click on the word survey in the upper right corner of the homepage, answer the nine questions, and you tell me, I'll bet it won't take you even a minute. And it really will help us because then we can tailor what we do to what you guys and ladies want. Thank you so much. Distraction is produced by Collisions, the podcast division of CRN International. Collisions, podcast for curious people. Our producer is the wonderful Sarah Gurton. Our audio engineers are the wonderfully punctual Pat Keogh and the beautifully intelligent Roman Zeitlin. And our editor is the magnificently intelligent Chris Latham.